Everybody start clapping right now. <laughs> the undefeated. The only nigga to ever defeat the internet. Yeah, yeah, and I still ain't lost yet, nigga. <laughs> Charles and White, what it is, brother? Oh, uh, what's up with it, man? It's called yeah. a bitch. Yeah, I got I got this mask on, uh, cause coronavirus is back. Uh, people finna start getting sick like they never was before. And and, and I'm telling y'all this because uh when it was here and you believed it was real, niggas start getting sick. All of a sudden they told you, you can start it back going outside, talking to people, you don't need masks no more, people stop getting sick. It, it, isn't that ironic? Ain't that ironic? With, even I said, homie, all of a sudden this shit just went away. No more social distance, no more vaccine pushing. Uh, it just all of a sudden went away. Who caught COVID for you that made you feel, oh, this shit is real? Nobody. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, everybody my mama knew died. My mm -hmm. mother got it, uh, my children got it, uh, my grandmother got it. Uh, people around me really got it. I never got it. Mm. When when Trump got it, uh, did that make you worry? Like, Nope. <laughs> uh, uh, white people catching it di didn't bother me because I know all of us don't have the same organs. All of us don't have the same... Uh, I all of us don't catch the same diseases. White people and black people don't catch the same diseases. Black people and Mexicans don't die from the same diseases. Black people all die from the same diseases. Uh, I never saw no dope fiend niggas catch it. I right. never seen the niggas down at the car wash, uh, down there nigga fucking with no rubber getting high, never bathing, barely eating. Uh, yeah, I never saw none of them people get it. And, and there was no big homeless population of people dying of, 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 of the pandemic. It was all the people uh, who, who washed their hands. It was the people who, who had great hygiene. It wasn't the poor hygienic people that was dying from that shit. All the niggas I know that, I know niggas that was getting burnt, nigga, <laughs> during the pandemic <laughs> and wasn't going to the doctor, was taking a... Uh, 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 or dental antibiotics, nigga, for STI infection. And them, niggas, dental say, antibiotics. Them niggas taking dental <laughs> antibiotics, nigga, for S STI, <laughs> STI infection, nigga. So, uh, nigga, I was, nigga, wasn't none of them nigga catching that shit. So, when they say something like the Spanish flu, Man, you, that's, a that's like a worldwide epidemic, though. No, that's the, them niggas that's fucking Spanish hole. Yeah, that's that's niggas that's niggas fucking the Spanish bitch. Oh shit. You know what else um is fucking my head up? They said we was in a recession. And uh back then everybody was up in arms and everybody was so we we in a recession. We are in a worse economic state than we were back then, and they ain't saying shit about uh, nothing. And uh, everybody just tried it alone. I, I, I don't believe I don't think a recession means shit. Right. We, we ain't hit a depression. That recession shit just bullshit. Yeah. Uh during the recession, uh niggas don't stop going to the strip club. Uh, uh Newports don't stop selling. They might go. Uh uh yeah, nigga, liquor, Hennessy, Ducey, all that shit don't stop selling during the recession. The weed man don't don't shut down during the recession. So if we were really hurting financially, niggas wouldn't buy cigarettes. Niggas wouldn't smoke black and miles. You would have to cut back on that. The strip club doors would be shut down because you would have to cut back on that nigga to, to, in order to just live. So how in the fuck we fuck a recession? Let me know when we're in a depression. <laughs> yeah, y'all playing on me with that recession shit. Yeah, but I was, I was just thinking like, it's really, everything is so media driven that it's like, they say one thing and everybody's up in arms. Now we buying up all the tissue. Like you saying, all that social distance and shit, it just, it's just gone now. No all of a sudden that shit don't mean nothing no more. All of a sudden uh, nobody's mysteriously not dying from this pandemic. And they said it hadn't went away. As a matter of fact, it, it it's actually has more strings now. So nobody's dying now. What happened? They were killing people. Nigga, that shit was made up and it was bullshit. Man, that was that that shit was to implement the new world order and what we're seeing today. Uh that that was the introduction of the new world order. 
All the governments getting on one accord. Never before in history has that ever happened. Do you think they can get us a social distance again? You got damn right. All they got to do is say it because because we're, because we're sheep now. <laughs> uh, uh, no no nobody's gonna buck. So they already ran a test. So they already ran a test where if they say, "Hey, get y'all ass back in the house," we gonna go back in the house. Be, be, because what they see now is 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 easy to control uh the American population and, and the European populations uh with fear propaganda. So so with, with, so uh how, how do you divide a, a, a nation? How do you conquer a nation? How 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 do you uh, oppress people? How do you conquer people? Uh, fear, envy, distrust. Fear, envy, distrust. So that's what our media, uh, our media cycles. Uh, 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 because there are cycles: morning, afternoon, evening, late night. So those are cycles uh, that that they're running. And so it's a it's a programming, right? Television programming, radio programming, and each new cycle has a has a narrative. Uh, and also has an agenda. So that's why you hear people say the liberal media. That's why you hear Fox News criticizing CNN and you hear CNN. So because each one have a narrative that, that they're trying to spin with facts, uh, not necessarily telling you the truth, just a bunch of facts. Uh, and, 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 and facts doesn't mean that's true because you have a lawyer and a prosecutor who both argue facts to try to present a case to try to see what's true and either or could be wrong with their facts. Now, there was a uh, an alert that went off on every cell phone in America. And they tried to say- it How they get everybody phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, how they get everybody phone number? <laughs> <laughs> I got my Amber Alert cut off where you this says this phone don't do this. I don't get I ain't supposed to get no emergency responses. Them how they count do, on how they do that? And I wanted to get your take on that because it just seemed very odd that they had to be was able to tap into every phone in the USA at one time. What's that white boy name uh had to run to Russia and hide? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, he, viral uh, nigga. Uh, uh, Eric Snowden. Yeah. Uh, I challenge every American to, to do their research on him. Mm. Uh, but don't you feel like they need to be able to get in touch with all of us at any no. given moment? Like right no. now? Like they. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hello? Hi, this is Chivalry Dispatch. Please hold for the recording. Man, fuck y'all. I don't want this AAA. I'd have left my motherfucker. Man, I left my keys, you know. Yeah, they finna get cussed out live oh, on camera. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> now, nah, man, uh, yeah, I left my keys in the, in the out of town. You gonna uh, blame AAA for that? Uh, on the plane. Well, they, they had me waiting at the airport, and they said they can uh get me some keys. Oh, yeah, and yeah, And then yeah, they, no. uh, they called back and said that I have to go to the dealership. Oh, yeah, no, no. Now, I look at it like this. The way a, a child might get kidnapped or something, shouldn't they be able to locate a phone if need be? Like, nigga, I need to triangulate. Uh, my, my privacy supersedes that. Yeah, there you go. As, as, as horrible as that sound, uh, as, 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 as horrific as that may be, uh, my right to privacy in this country and, and from the government to, 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 to not invade my privacy uh, supersedes that child's need to be rescued. That's another thing that I also learned on Star. Um, a lawyer told me that on Star tracks your car even if you don't pay for the service. They don't. If you actually didn't hit that button, they'll talk to you. But if you need some help, they won't send nobody because you ain't paid for nothing. Because he, he and he they can listen. And they can listen. And they can also because they use on Star to triangulate if you've had a wreck. And you try to get insurance after the wreck, they can t tell you what time you got into this wreck. Yeah. So it's like, how much of our everyday do you think is being monitored? Uh, we we we've uh, since nine eleven we've we've given up our liberties by way by way of the Patriot Act. See, we how I mean, we so caught up in what's going on online with entertainment 
uh, the nigga, we missing the laws that's being made. Uh, every two years, every four years, uh, damn near every year, uh, there are new laws that's being put on the books. There are new laws that's being introduced to, to legislation uh, that's being passed. And nigga, we don't have a clue what they are, uh, let alone uh, things like the Patriot Act. Uh, nigga, the Patriot Act uh, gives them the right to look look at look in your house when the TV out. Damn. If you ain't unplugged, <laughs> nigga, <laughs> nigga, if you if you if you at home and you got a desktop computer and your desktop computer got a camera on it. If you don't cover that motherfucking camera up, nigga, they can look in there. They can listen. If you don't cut. So uh, that's why Eric Snowden fleed this country because he said, hey, y'all, this motherfucking government in America is not only using this technology against terrorists, but they're using it against their own citizens. Uh, but they'll complain to the world about a, a, a dictator like. Uh, Russia, that's what Russia does, homie. Uh, they government listens to everything, sex in the bedroom. So uh, there's nothing they, the Russian government don't hear. Uh, the Israeli government is nothing that they don't hear over the Palestinians. They got some of the best techno eavesdropping technology, homie. They heard them plan an attack. So they're using this against us. So when they go arrest all these rapping niggas and they say, hey, we got this for this. Just know they got some more evidence that they can't say that, that they can't say that we have because it's illegal to do just yet. So fast forward to now. So we way past the Patriot Act, my nigga. Nigga, now we post pandemic. Most people don't know and wasn't paying attention that when the coronavirus hit, homie, and the country shut down and, and our government started uh, passing laws and, and signing executive orders, uh, nigga, this was a war. They started signing defense acts. You see what I'm saying? So uh, what's under that defense act that now allows them to go listen, uh, uh, surveillance, uh, whatever, homie? So... Uh, our, our civil liberties uh, was exchanged probably during the 70s when, when, when America became a capitalist country. And, and, and so by, by us being capitalism, uh, uh, capitalism trumps our citizenship. So long before we woke up and had a terrorist attack, uh, the American citizens had already been re-identified and reclassified as consumers. So that's why you never hear the American, that's why you never hear the media address us as the American citizens. It's the American consumers. So consumerism have trumped citizenship, homie. So we got more con consumer rights than we have citizen rights now. Do you, is there a way to escape this or are we just- Hell fuck? no, we can't undo this, homie. Uh, the world doesn't get better. Boys and girls, every 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 religious book that you've ever written or, or that was ever written or read says that this has to come to an end. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker ain't getting better. Uh, the flowers ain't regrouping and becoming prettier. We're seeing less flowers. Uh, children aren't becoming. Uh, they're not re-evolving into children again. These motherfuckers progressing into demons. So now, nah, homie, the world has to come to an end and reset. Uh, the earth has to cleanse itself. Uh, and this motherfucker got to be cleansed, homie. Amen. So, so now, nah, homie, this this shit. Uh, now nah, we not we we this we're, we're moving forward in in a, in a in a expedited time. Look how quick this year went by. Man, right before our eyes. This shit, nigga. We're we're moving we're moving forward in time, but it seems like time is being expedited. And bro, it was crazy you saying that. It, this shit went by so quick. I'm like, damn, it was just cold. It seemed like we didn't even really have a summer. Yeah, and it seemed like summer, winter is stretching, become longer and longer. Stretched like last year, stretched into March. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 
That's, uh, 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 things are happening quick. Yeah, things are happening quick. You uh, you ever I'm get vaccinated? I'm trying to get y'all a coach sponsorship too. Oh yeah, hey. Uh, 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 no, uh, so I got it sitting on the couch and everything. Said, Always Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Tyrese and everybody on that <laughs> shit. God damn, I got it. Um. So hey, let's do it like this then, man, because I'm about to get more into that COVID stuff, but we're gonna we're gonna move on, you know, hey, hey, hey. Touchy subject. Um it's the uh it's the day before Halloween. Yeah. What do you, what are your thoughts on on Hollow's Eve, Hallow, Halloween, uh kids dressing up as demons and going out and uh asking strangers for candy? Uh All, all holidays are, are pagan holidays. That's where I was going next. <laughs> so it, whether whether it's holiday, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Easter, uh, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day. So let's look at the origins of, of these days. That's where we started, right? Let's look at the origins of these days. Well, what's the origin of this day? The day of the dead. Yep. So this this is the day that 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 people who, who didn't believe in God, and there was a group of them, who worshiped darkness, who worshiped death, who worshiped the demons, who worshiped murder, uh, who worshiped incest, uh, who worshiped lust, uh, this day day. <laughs> this day day. The, the ghouls and the goblins. Uh, and, 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 and this day is a day of, of, to, to, to really cause terror to bring about fear, to frighten people. Uh, this ain't no motherfucking day of laughter. Mm. We just get drunk on this day and make it a day of laughter. But nigga, this is a dangerous day. If if they were to have a Charleston White costume in spirit or whatever store, would you feel like, and they didn't, they ain't reached out to you, would you feel like I need to holler at them and get uh, what's owed to me? You goddamn right. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I'm gonna kick them Charleston's ass. Yeah, nigga, For real? yeah. Y'all feel like they picking on me. Yeah. yeah, nigga dressed up like me walking around some of them. I'm gonna kick them Charleston's ass. Yeah, I'm gonna feel like they fucking with me. Man, please. No, man, boy, man, nigga lying to me. And, and they ain't reached out to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, nah, nigga, I'm on stage. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do them motherfucking police shooting protests, cause that's all you can do. Yeah, go block the driveway where people can't come in, disturb outside the doorway, hollering and shit. No justice, no peace, all that kind of shit. Make it about race, play the race card. Uh, yeah, yeah, all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. Now they say uh, Halloween has been actually turned into something more sexual, like. Like women ain't even are nobody's even dressing up. At, they just dressing up like hoes. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, listen. <laughs> Give me a reason. Uh, I thought that nigga was lying. <laughs> that nigga say, man, them hoes had that pussy out in Dallas just all weekend long in them oh. Halloween. He said, nigga, them hoes, I was riding all downtown, man, them hoes. And every every time I looked on social media, I said, boy, look at that hoe spirit. <laughs> That's that hoe spirit that done been ushering in, my nigga. Even, even in this, even, even in what, what, what the nurses, uh, 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 Tina Turner, uh, what's the other woman name, uh, Elvira? What happened to them people? Why everything got to be the whole pussy, titties, and ass out? And then if it's a nigga uh, running around just like Jason taking the pussy on Halloween, they go think he wrong. <laughs> so you got that. Square business, cause man, for real, it's a, because this what, this is a dangerous night. This is a night where if I own a store, I don't know who get to come in and rob. Everything's a flip of the coin, because the niggas who do wrong, this they night. The niggas who wake up and intentionally do wrong, who rob, steal, and kill, this they night to cover, to hide behind the fun of this. The niggas who want to kill. Who want to go drill and strategic in they drilling? This day night they get to do this. So this is a dangerous night while others is out having fun. There's two sides to this coin. And nigga just like them holding it out with that ass and pussy and titty out. It's a nigga dressing up to come be a pervert too now. And he looking to slip something in your drink. Come on, man. 
Not for real. But in the name of fun, we overlook these red flags in 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 this. this you know, we overlook this shit. I'm uh, I ain't in the no day, but every day. Yeah, every day is Halloween and, and Christmas for me, homie. You yeah, don't let them trick you into this shit. Speaking of things that were supposed to be fun that have gotten dangerous, the fair shooting. Um, why do you think that it just niggas can't just go somewhere and have fun? Why does it have to be like we, a day like this or events like this where they just got to shoot up the shit? Because if I shoot you in the closet and don't nobody see it, then I shot you for nothing. <laughs> yeah. I want people to know we did this. We want people to know we came out and did this. So most of these shootings are people with undeveloped brains. That's first and foremost, let's, let's identify this. Right. These are not logical thinking human beings with rational uh, forms of thought process. These are typically young people, 25 and under, who lack the brain capacity to make logical and rational decisions because there are impulsive individuals and creatures with undeveloped brain and most of them dealing with trauma and they trying to prove something. Right? Uh, if this was at, if this was the far, if this was during a time when white people was there, uh, it'll be a bunch of dead black people. Cause white people got them guns on their side and they go shoot and help and defend. Mm -hmm. See the niggas go run, dunk it high, cause they don't know what to do, nigga. But that's why when, when I'm out with my my family, homie, I try not to go places where I can't get my pistol in, and I can't defend my people. And these niggas got these guns. Right. If nothing else, while they having a shootout over there, you can be over here picking their ass out. Just like when Mo3 got was getting shot at. It was an innocent guy in the car, got out got to shooting at the dude that was shooting at Mo3. Mm -hmm. uh, why pass all these laws in Texas, homie? If the bad guys get to take, if the, if the bad guys get to overrule, and this is an open carry state, and you don't have to have a license to carry. Nigga, we all got guns on our hip. Why ain't none of these bad guys dead? And then why ain't none of these bad guys in jail? Because somebody at the fur know that was Jimmy, Leroy, and Curtis that did that. Well, they caught one nigga and he... he yeah, they need to be torching him to tell on other nigga. <laughs> I was, I, I, we were sitting here talking they about... They need what, to be... Whatever they was doing to the Taliban, waterboarding. waterboarding. They need to be waterboarding that nigga in loose Terry. Find out where the rest of these niggas at. Kicking in his dough, uh, arresting his mama for whatever traffic, unpaid traffic ticket she ain't got. Cause we need to find these other two motherfucking shooters. Your son went who? Who? Who did he leave with? That's how. That's what they were doing in Colombia or Mexico. Pass. Pass. That's what we got to do to these niggas. Go arrest his whole family. <laughs> if a Sarge is two, is two, two twin sisters here. Send them to CPS. <laughs> Separate everybody until this nigga tell us who was the driver who took him up there, and then put it. Yeah, nah, you would never do it. <laughs> she, the feds go to doing them nigga like that when they really want them, put charges on their mamas, their girlfriend, their sister, and have everybody. The feds do it, and them nigga go to admitting the shit that they normally wouldn't admit to when mama calls and says, "Oh, baby, they about to arrest me too, baby, baby, please, niggas." <laughs> What niggas? You gotta be a cold motherfucker with a tight lip on mama. They coming down on everybody. Is there anything we can do as a city to make those type of days safer? Uh. Oh, well, you think it's. Oh, uh, yeah. You have to go back to putting up Jim Crow signs. This city has to go back to the Jim Crow era. Uh, no colors allowed. Black and white water fountains. Catch your ass across these railroad tracks. You die, get your ass whooped or go to jail after a certain time of night. Niggas shouldn't be nowhere off of 75 Walnut Hill out there in that Holland Hill area, you know where. You shouldn't even go that way to go home leaving the club. You should be Loop 12 or 35. We catch you out. Yeah, you got to go back to that. Other Not than too. that, you have to take these days away. 
Uh, you just had to white boy shoot up everybody in Maine. We do this every weekend. We have to take these days away. You have to stop letting people under 25 come to the fair. If they come to the fair, you have to have a police checkpoint. Everybody out the car like they do at the prison visitation. Everybody out the car. Cut the car off, pop the hood, pop the trunk. We're looking in the glove compartment. Just like prison visitation. Damn, Not bend, only that, bend over and cough? No, 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 no. It, this is before you go into oh, the yeah, prison. Oh, yeah, okay, this is visitation, this is visitation, yeah. This, yeah. this before you go into prison. And when we get, when you get there, right, we pat searching every motherfucker getting out this car. We pat searching every motherfucker getting out this car. If you don't do that, then you continue to put everybody's life in jeopardy when you're dealing with this group of black people trying to have fun. Because... Death is attached to our fun. Death is attached to our fun. One of the young kids said uh, he wasn't running until a bullet hit him. Uh, that's some ignorant stuff. What well, do you that's why the bullet hit him. <laughs> <laughs> next time he knows run, I bet next time them motherfucking bullets pop, 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 I bet he run like a motherfucker next time if he can still run. God damn. Yeah, yeah, that's why that's why he didn't run. That's why he got hit, dummy. So see though, I gotta but listen. Go ahead. You don't run when you hear gunshots. Yeah, what's the protocol? You hit the ground, nigga, and learn to crawl on your belly like they do in the army when they have to go under the net. You use your knees and your elbows to pull yourself on the ground. You don't run and look around and try to assess, you use your ears. And you drop and you crawl. So you teach your children that. It's big as fast. I have to ask you, uh, you, you mentioned the main shooter. Um, you know, you, of course, you have an arsenal uh, for defense, you know, just in case yeah. it goes down. Uh, what do America do about the angry white man that does want to go out and cause genocide if he's having a bad day? Uh, nothing. Uh, uh. The, the angry white man that's going out having a bad day, uh, he the rooster that roosts for America. Uh, he, the, he the evil that's coming back to hunt them mm. because he keeps them in fear like the nigga used to. See, the nigga, the angry nigga used to keep the white man in fear. When he got free, hey, fact. this country couldn't sleep for a long time when black people got their freedom because they always feared the black man was so angry he would come back and, and, and seek retribution in the form of violence. Uh, but we're not violent people. Uh, we've been conditioned to, to, to be violent uh, uh, because children mimic what they see and repeat what they hear. So that's the only reason we're violent. We're conditioned. Uh, this angry white man who they keep saying is battling and struggling with mental health uh, doesn't have a mental health problem. He's an angry white man. And angry white men do things when they're angry and impulsive and 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 and, and intentional. They, do, uh, they hold a lot in and then all of a sudden well, they don't hold shit in. <laughs> white people don't hold nothing in, my nigga. When white people get angry, they are angry. And they do things. They go to war. Nigga, they invade. They bomb. So, no, this ain't no, it, it, mental health is a smoke screen that they use. Hey. Uh, it wasn't long ago where they used to hang black people. They used to hang black people. That'll cost and, mental and, health and, 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 and not only did they hang them, they set him on fire. Come on, man. And they would stand around this person as he burned. And they would inhale the fumes. Lynch fume. party. They would inhale the fumes. Yeah. You know how bad that smell? Yeah. And they would smile and take pictures. Gather. With the corpse, with their kids. Man. They wasn't highly mental health then. Man. So those same actions, uh, uh, they still lie in the hearts and in the inactions of these angry so-called mental health white boys. Mm. It's Man. just that 
the white boys today not digesting the same hate that the ones before who acted like them. They're not digesting the same hate. They taking it out on where it belongs. They aunties, they uncles, they mamas, they cousins. They ain't shooting. Very seldom are they doing the Dylan Roof shit. Right. Most of them going to go kill their own. So uh, in a couple of days, they're about to uh, drop a new Call of Duty game, and they're saying this is the most realistic Call of Duty, the most realistic killing you're going to have, you're going to see in the video game ever. What are your uh, thoughts when they have simulated killings in the hands of young kids growing up today? Uh, that's why you see more school shootings. That's why you see more kids dying and using and shooting guns and military style weapons. That's why you see more kids with a fascination of guns. But uh, that's here nor there. Let's go. The reason this historical game is about to be released because we are embarking upon World War IV. Oh, yeah. Timing is very interesting. What? <laughs> Timing is very you think interesting. This is, you think this is a coincidence? Come on, man. Nigga, you think this is a coincidence? You got Russia, Ukraine, America back in Ukraine, China in North Korea, in Iran, back in Russia. Russia is now cool with Africa. Africa, China, Russia, North Korea, all of them is coming together to come on home and derail the dollar. Come on. Not only that, uh, America is telling Iran, we go do something to y'all as if they can't do nothing back to us, as if they don't have the same nuclear capabilities that we have. Mm. As if they, nah, homie, they ain't no small country. And they still mad about, they got a general, homie, that they killed. America killed about seven or eight years ago, homie, with a drone strike. And it was an unfair strike. The whole country came out for this general. It's like Nipsey Hussle time 10. The whole country came out for this general from the, from the, from those the, the, the satellites in the sky, homie, you saw so many humans out there. Hey. hey. So, so you think this is a coincidence that uh, in, in 15 years that our, our kids, our young niggas, homie, won't be having to be drafted into a war? They're already saying niggas, eight out of 10 Americans is too fat to be in the military, too lazy, can't pass a physical exam. Hey. So I, with, with Israel and Hamas having their situation, uh, who does Charleston White sympathize for in all uh, these? Palestine. Okay. Not Hamas. Palestine. Palestine. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, those are two brothers that's having a conflict. Mm -hmm. And 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 one brother is wrong, and everybody know he's wrong, but they backing him like he right. The other brother saying, "Man, look what all he done took." He didn't come take this. We allowed him to come over here and work with us. But y'all done helped him take all of this from us. So how we wrong? Not only that, y'all have placed him above us. Now y'all know my brother ain't right. And y'all done placed him above us. So when we attack them, your media and their media, because they control the media. Yeah. They control whatever narrative that the world gets to hear is about his brother. Me and my brother lying motherfucker. But no, nah, he's not. You get to control the media. You get to show the world whatever you want us to see about you and your brother's conflict. It's not fair. So I side with the Palestinians, homie, because I understand the truth. I understand their history. And, and, and I know when the Jews left Germany after, after the Holocaust, uh, nobody wanted them. Nobody wanted them. Hey. Nobody, nigga. America didn't even want them. America brought the Nazis over here. America brought the Nazis over here, homie. Hey. He, they didn't bring the Jews. They wouldn't got the Nazis. Hey. Seen Oppenheimer. <laughs> Come on, homie. Hey. So nobody wanted the Jews. So the Palestinians wasn't too thrilled with the way they was coming back. 
but they allowed them to come back without bombing on them. So they had one side of the land give Jews the credit. They had the rocky side. They worked it and built it up. Look what it is now. But they cheated. They cheated. And they tricked the world, homie, and made the world believe that the Palestinians was the, was the, was the bad ones. And they're not. I swear to you, they're not. Man. I got to ask you, we had touched on pagan holidays. Uh, and you had mentioned, of course, you know, these creative pagan holidays. You had mentioned Christmas. Yeah. And I always wondered, uh, you know, Charleston, why, what, what was Christmas for you growing up? And is it something you, you still, like, does it still make that gushy feeling in your, in your stomach yeah. at this old age? Um, uh, I, I come from a family-oriented family. Uh, Christmas was real big for me as a kid, homie, because uh, as far back as I can think of, everything I ever put on a Christmas list, I got it. Hey. Yeah, that I didn't grow up for it, my nigga. I, I, we, we wasn't waiting on the angel tree, my nigga. Nigga, I, nigga, uh, yeah, there were plenty of trees. I remember the angel trees. <laughs> yeah, nah, I don't, I don't, nah, homie, nigga, I, everything I put on there, homie, uh, uh, because my mother worked a lot. And so she was trying to make up for, for working. So, so, so we were shower with gifts for Christmas time and birthdays, whether we deserved it or earned it or not. Uh, that was just always Christmas. Uh, up until I was 10, 10 years old, nigga, I believed in Santa Claus. Do you do you blame your mama uh, for making you believe in Santa Claus like that? Damn, you should have told me off the nah, rip. I, I blame my brother for nigga making me not believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> it be that brother. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, showing me what mama K-Y. got. Showing me what mama got the toys. Look, look, come here, blue mama got. Yeah, nigga. Look at the bed. Look at the bed. Like, I, I ain't supposed to see this album, shit. Nigga, I wanted to. You, I was heartbroken when I realized Santa didn't exist. Nigga, that mama was Santa Claus. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that was part of my rebellion stage. Wait, wait, so you didn't question it though, like seven, eight? Like, wait a minute. No, nigga, because, <laughs> because, because you don't, if nigga, I was a kid that never questioned, questioned grown ups. I thought grown ups told the truth. Yeah. I, 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 listen, homie, only children that come from abuse, uh, neglect, trauma, those are the children who have questions about what grown ups say. Children who don't, when whatever grown ups say, they wholeheartedly believe it. That's why biblically they say you're supposed to be like a child when receiving the word of God. Just take it for what it is. You don't even question it. Man, say. Nigga, when your dad in your life and, and your daddy say, my son looked at me one time, homie, I took him to the WWE, and that nigga saw me next to John Cena. And afterwards he said, Dad, you think you can whoop John Cena? I said, yeah, man, I whooped four John Cena's. <laughs> <laughs> man, that little boy believe that. Yeah, got to. Man, it, life had to tell him otherwise. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? That just come from as his brain developed. But now, homie, my son believed I could lift a car in the house till he was almost 10, 11 years old. Come on now. And that's for the better of that young man. <laughs> homie, that's that's when a child, that's when a child has the right things in his life, when he really believes what grown folks say. He ain't been violated. His youth hasn't been stole. So I see a lot of niggas like my brother and them, homie, my homie and them, who come home from prison from their youth, and they're just like kids. They believe what everybody say. So if you say, I'm going to come pick you up at 730, they be expecting you to be there because they don't know no other. They don't know nothing else. Come on and now. children typically don't know nothing else until you what, what you show them. Yeah, until you show them the real so, world. So, nigga, as a kid, nigga, I was still putting my tooth up under the pillar in the sixth grade, my nigga, for the tooth fairy. Mm. 11, 12 years old. It wasn't until them bullshit ass uncles and your thuggish, angry ass brother come along and start had got you discrediting mama. Say, hey, nigga, I ain't no motherfucking Santa Claus, nigga. Man, you ruining my childhood telling me that, nigga. I ain't no Easter Bunny. What? Nigga, I thought it was an Easter Bunny. Marie. <laughs> Come on, homie, but God you damn want, uncles. homie, you want children to be innocent like this, my yeah, nigga. Pure hearted. Yeah. Come on, my nigga. That's facts. God damn, pull man, the wool I, over there. I literally remember, nigga, Christmas Eve, nigga, looking out the window up in the sky, hoping I can see catch Santa. I'm telling you, literally, nigga, baking cookies, leaving cookies out for Santa to eat them, and Mama eat them, homie. Come on, I, man. Homie, that's what you want. That's no be magical. Eat. Come on, homie. <laughs> yeah. Why we want to rob them of that? Oh man. So, uh so so yeah, now nah, home. I, I had a I had a great childhood for Christmas. Uh uh my mother wasn't in the Halloween. 
But 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 school was in the Halloween. True. So but but I remember, homie, uh, nigga, Halloween. It wasn't this dark. So right after school, we went to trick or treating uh, around six, six or seven, and nigga, the kids off the streets around nine or ten. Facts. Facts. Yeah. And some so, other shit. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean by time is being expedited, homie. So you had mentioned, of course, we ain't in a recession. You waiting for the depression. Yeah, but we're sure. seeing all across America, everyone going on strike, the actors, the writers, the GMC, the, the people building cars. I seen a, another- uh, if, we, if we was in a depression, nigga, they wouldn't go on strike. Yeah, because, I wonder where, where the hell they going? Like, but what, 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 why y'all on strike for this little while? That means you're not getting no paycheck. Most people working from paycheck to paycheck. So the people who decide to go on strike, they may got a little money saved up. But the other people at the bottom still trying to hold on. Uh, nigga, guess what? They ain't really got it. But if they stay in there, they might get their toes ran over. Come on now. If they might get their cars on flat. So, uh, homie, we, nigga, the ghetto's still having fun, so we can't be in no recession or depression. God damn it. If, if all comedians went on strike, would you go with them? Uh, to, for better pay, we need... Uh-uh. Because <laughs> them niggas ain't let me in yet, no way. Uh, so I'm still the nigga jumping over everybody's shoulders. Hey, man, let me come in. They still ain't letting me, they still pushing me out the way. Uh, they still ain't fully embraced me as a comedian yet. Hey, I uh, uh, Because they want me to be what they want me to be. Uh, they don't want to accept me for what I set out to be, an entertainer. Uh, whether that's a comedian, an actor, a shit-talking YouTube motherfucker, or uh, just a funny looking motherfucker on the camera. The nigga, I'm entertaining. Man, that's real. Man, that's real. Now, you had mentioned some off camera before we walked in to where, um, you know, we got to touch on it because, you know, it, you might have changed the course of a lot of shit yeah. within the college football arena. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know how the fuck, uh, but you had HBC. Uh, to the you, goddamn, yes, uh, you know, and this I know it's homecoming for a lot of uh, HBCUs. Hope y'all having fun, stay protected, do you know, goddamn, say sex. Um, what I would say is this, man, you had you had recently went in on, uh, you know, of course, uh, Deion Sanders, son, uh, Shador, you know, wanted to make sure that hey, listen, damn all that, you know, the bounty was out. Make sure that hey, y'all do y'all thing. And of course, no one collected on none, none. Yeah, yeah, They've yeah. They been losing it, every goddamn game since. Uh, well, I put a hex on them too now. Goddamn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, now nah, nigga, every, every, I pray in the name of Jesus, homie, on a weekly basis. <laughs> I literally get on my knees talk man, to him, talk to and pray in the name of Jesus, Father him. God, that Deion Sanders lose. I plead the blood of Jesus on a nigga's shoulders that they dislocate that boy hip. I mean, man, I do some shit with the Lord, I swear. Oh, uh, and so, nigga, you can't win against me. Everybody I done went against done lost. Damn. Man, we can go, we can line up from, man, home, I can name, nigga, ain't nobody won. You know, I never believed in voodoo until you probably just did that just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit, man. That, one, uh, man, that was just, that was just the Lord's a, prayer. That's a real prayer. Listen, <laughs> why I can't plead the blood of Jesus I on a nigga to get hurt? <laughs> because the vengeance is the Lord's, ain't it? It is. So I'm asking the Lord to take vengeance. God don't care nothing about a football game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't care nothing about no motherfucking quarterback. Nigga, many kids being dying. And, and yeah, he don't care nothing about a nigga uh, hip getting dislocated when uh, he can't go to the NFL. Did you put any money on there? Did you put any money up for them to lose? Like, oh, uh, yeah, I bet every week against them. <laughs> yeah. I only lost one time. That one coming up. <laughs> yeah, I bet every week. Yeah, I got a fool. Uh, he ready to quit now. Oh, uh, but that, yeah, uh, they, they, they last, they last one. Yeah, he was, yeah, nah. Oh, it was yeah. close, it was close. <laughs> when they, when they lost against Stanford, people, but people were saying, man, ain't nobody bit, uh, uh, nah, it was a team that they beat that they were supposed to lose to or something. Uh, and people said, man, ain't, ain't nobody fool enough to bet you that Dion and them was going to win. They knew they were going to lose. I said, no, nah, I got a fool that think them niggas go, Dion go take these people somewhere. Now they starting to believe Dion ain't taking these motherfuckers nowhere. God damn. Because now they making excuses on why he a loser. Well, he won two games more than he won last year. He's still a loser. There you go. He's still a loser. God damn. If they was one and 11 last year and they go three and something this year, they, you still a loser. 
I think you still go by the 50-50 rule. You got to win 50, win more than 50% of your games. Oh, uh, then why all the celebrities get so involved then? Why, why was it such a big hoorah then? Why it ain't no big hoorah as he losing no more? Why ain't all the celebrities walking out on the sideline giving these kids the excitement and the thrills and the feels and the oohs and ahs that they once had? Why not support them now and get behind them now that they looking and feeling like losers? Because they getting their ass kicked. Not only they getting their ass kicked on the field, they getting their ass robbed off the field. They getting their jewelry and shit took. Nigga, well-to-do ass niggas. What do you think that was an inside job? Because they they didn't. Man, everybody get robbed in California. <laughs> Nigga, PMB Rock. Uh, everybody get robbed in California. Didn't they rob that girl for one of them Frenchie dogs? They did. Man, everybody get robbed. And they smash and grab in California. You think they ain't gonna smash and grab them little old weak ass Colorado boy? <laughs> Them gang banging nigga. Nigga, them cripping blood and pyro nigga. Nigga, them nigga probably just went in there and took it while them nigga was sitting at the lockers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, them we, yeah, them nigga probably was sitting at the lockers when them when cuz and blood and them walked in there hollering about, give me that chain, cuz. Yeah, man, them nigga probably handed it to them nigga. Them nigga didn't steal it. Them strong arm them boy. And they ain't gonna do nothing about it. And they went and called the police. Bunch of snitching ass football players done reported. They done been shit. Man, them nigga weak in the motherfucker. That's why they ain't going nowhere. So Stay in HBCU, boys and girls. You see what happened? We don't snitch in the ghetto, right? If you go to Colorado, you end up calling the police on people. We need y'all need to shame them old snitching ass niggas. <laughs> So, cause niggas steal my necklace, I'm gonna call the police too. <laughs> hey, bullshit, breaking my locker. Nigga, I'm on 911 your ass to death. So, do you think it's just, you think they just athletically they don't have it? Like the team, like they're not strong at, uh, as a team? Like, why do they keep losing? Uh, too many flat footed niggas. <laughs> yeah, too many flat footed niggas. And they got four, five, knock knee white boy, pigeon toe white boys trying to block. For that nigga quarterback, that's why. Then mentally they ain't got it. See, they think Deion Sanders was they think Deion Sanders strong as a coach. But boy, uh Deion Sanders wasn't strong as a player. He wasn't no team player. He was an individual nigga on the outside playing. He was a punt return, kickoff return. Deion wasn't no team player, and Deion couldn't tackle. Everybody know Deion couldn't tackle. And once he got that turf toe, Deion lost his mental strengthness. That's why he ran to the Lord. And if all them boys got in the church and, 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 and went to Bible school, they made great football players at a Christian college. But, man, they playing against teams like UCLA, uh, niggas, that, niggas, crack baby niggas. Uh, niggas, yeah, yeah, nah, man, <laughs> niggas ain't thinking. Man, hell nah. Them niggas ain't strong enough mentally, physically, or spiritually. Yeah, that Jesus, them niggas uh, 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 running the ball against them niggas. Uh, with with no Jesus, please. You see what's happening? God damn, God damn. Uh, uh, the prayers work. God ain't in football. <laughs> God got too much other shit to worry about with this drill and rap music. He ain't helping no motherfucking well to do kids playing football. Now you were saying something earlier about uh, you know, if you was to go out and protest and you know, hey, I'm black and a lot of people right now we talk about story. We talk about. Do you feel like protesting works like? to go up in arms and have a protest. You feel like that actually works when groups gather and picket fence things? Nope. Don't work at all. Uh, uh, what works is uh, the union president and some more of the people part of the union auto worker, uh, they kidnap a few of them people, family members. Got it. Protesting don't do a motherfucking thing. If you ain't rushing up in they motherfucking house, snatching they wife at her while she screaming and hollering, blindfolding her while the, while the motherfucking maze and the yard man running to call 911, shit, I done waste this motherfucking shit on the couch. Uh, if, if, if God damn it, you ain't up at the school, uh, riding by the school, you, you done alerted the motherfucking me uh, school resource officer that it's a van riding by with tinted windows to kidnap them people. Nah, homie, you wasting your time. Because 
They said they was losing how much? A uh, hundred million dollars or something a week. General Motors was losing. Mm-hmm. They come to an agreement. Nigga, the agreement that they coming to to pay these people is nothing that these corporations have made. So you think about what we as taxpayers and, and, and American citizens done for the auto industry. Homie, the auto industry failed and we bailed them out. So since being bailed out, nigga, they have made record earnings. I'm talking about rec- every year, their record earnings keep going higher and higher, and these people haven't got a dollar raise. They hire workers who work there for three to five years as temporary employees, never having any benefits. So meaning that's six days a week, if I need a day off, my job is always in jeopardy. And they are, and they reporting record number earnings, and we got to squabble with y'all about a little bit of money, homie. Or uh, I don't encourage mayhem, and I don't and I don't encourage anarchy. But that's the only thing gonna make this country hit the reset button, is when the people realize they got the power. And nigga, they stand up and rise. So there's a movie in a book. I read the book and I saw the movie. It's called V for Vendetta. Y'all watch that motherfucker. Y'all watch that motherfucker. And y'all understand where we are going for the future. The people will go against the media. The people will go against the entertainment industry. The people will start harming celebrities. The people will start kidnapping politicians. This is coming and they know it. Nigga, they know it because they can predict crime. So they they have things what they call uh, quantitative statistics, right? So they can look at an area. They can look at the growth of, of an area and, and, and they, they use a a predicting tool, what they call a, 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 a bell curve, right? So they factor in all these numbers and do like this mathematical equation and they can say, hey man, there's gonna be crime over here in 10 years. There's gonna be a wave of crime. Man, they can predict this shit. Nice. So after the, 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 capital, the capital riots and, and, and what Donald Trump was able to tap into the regular common persons, uh, frustrations toward the government uh, that scares them. Uh, that's why they're so they're so set and, and bent on on putting putting him to rest, uh, putting him to rest uh, because uh, he 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 watered he watered some seeds of of dope civil. I was gonna say domestic rebellion, but that's kind of classifying us as as terrorists. But we're not terrorists. Uh, we're frustrated and fed up Americans who have a right to be civilly disobedient, mm. uncivil rest. So we have mm. a right to be civil, civilly disobedient, where we can challenge our government and, and throw rocks at the police uh, and shoot bullets at our government peaceful, officials. Peaceful protest. Uh, well, uh, mm-hmm. now nah, we have a right to peacefully protest, but we also have a right to bear arms and stand against our government when they're gone too far. That's our constitutional rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, stand against tyranny. Yeah. Bear arms and stand against tyranny. Yeah, homie, that's our constitutional right. But talking like that and gathering up a group of motherfuckers uh, <laughs> uh, get your motherfucking ass put in federal prison yeah. and classified as a domestic terrorist because most Americans don't know their rights so it'll be easy to convict me of domestic terrorism. So, and you know, I, we, I was talking about this with some of my other friends, like, it just seems like, and it, aside from black people being whatever, because nobody gives a fuck about a bunch of nah. angry black people, but... There is the middle class is being erased. And that's where a lot of comfortable white people, Mexicans, Asians rest. And it's only, it's getting to only be the poor and the rich. Oh. And there's a class of people who are gonna refuse to be poor. Niggas gonna be poor forever. We know. Yeah, no, no, that though, listen, <laughs> them them soccer moms, yeah, 
Boy, them motherfucking fat redneck pink them soccer moms. Uh, man, them Asians planting them, planting them flowers out in the front yard to live. Uh, y'all got them fucked up. If you think they feel to be pushed down by and, us, with and, us. And, until you have the poverty. So you got below the poverty line. Mm-hmm. Then you got at the poverty line. Mm-hmm. Then you got above the poverty line. Mm-hmm. Then you got poor. Right. Right? Then a uh, little bit of poor, you got your, you got a bridge that kind of works you into middle class. Most people get stuck on that bridge. Mm-hmm. Check to check living, apartment, rent house, nice car with a car note, car get repo, two, three. So that's that, that's that bridge. But that middle class, if you think they fit across that bridge, Knowingly, intentionally, and willingly, uh, we'll see a whole bunch of unrest in this country. Uh, we're going back to a, a time that was, it was called the Victorian age in Europe. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the time of the haves and the have-nots, and those were the only two a uh, social class that you had, rich and poor, and the poor never mix with the rich. The the rich never mix with the poor, and you saw this on 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 the movie, uh, uh, when the when the when the boat sunk, Titanic. Mm-hmm. Titanic. You saw that on Titanic, right. nigga. The, mm-hmm. the upper class was up there, the poor, and, and you was treated as such. Uh, we're going back to that. So let's uh, let's go and do it like this. Because uh, speaking of the rich not mixing with the poor, we got to talk about some some things. And uh, I got to get your thoughts on uh, uh, Cesar Pena, DJ Envy. Uh, seemed like they didn't rand up some type of something. You know, DJ Envy said, "I ain't got nothing to do it. I'm a victim." But to say you have a victim, to say you're a victim means that you're saying a crime been committed. And now they're going through with this housing scheme to where you know, people have given their money and they ain't got back their return on their investment. And now they're, you know, the feds then came in and came down on a uh, Caesar opinion. Uh, my question to you is really more so, is it a crime if someone willingly gives you their money uh, expecting some magic to happen behind the scenes? Uh, yes. If you gave them false information, uh, you can't defraud anybody. Uh, I can lie and talk you out your money, and I ain't done a motherfucking thing wrong. Maybe I sell the house. Maybe I won't. Men lying. <laughs> uh, but once I start defrauding you, then, then then that's a crime, homie. And and you have me giving you this money in the name of the information you didn't gave me. And we buying houses. If I gave you statistics and uh, we're flipping houses. These niggas wasn't giving them statistics. <laughs> uh, they had a real real estate program where they were teaching people uh, uh, how to acquire this. And, and, and uh, it was a Ponzi scheme. Oh, that's against the law. Yeah, that's where they lost me. <laughs> it's a Ponzi scheme. So... <laughs> Once you do so many people, uh, of course it becomes a crime. You do one or two or three people, uh, you don't hit a lick. But once you continue on and, 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 and you start doing this on the level they was doing it, homie, nigga, they were teaching classes. <laughs> uh, and, and, and they was promising some things. And at some point, they had to begin to play as if you bought this for this to get to this point. Everybody else seemed like they stopped. I ain't gonna say no names, Tony the Closer. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna say no names, Tony the Closer. Yeah, why you can't. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like that. Uh, what's the other nigga name that came here? Uh, did the real estate. Uh, he was at the uh, the pandemic bookstore in Oak Cliff. 
Who, they was on the corner, the real estate nigga that was doing all. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, goddamn. Oh, he was talking good game. Come too. on, man. Oh, uh, goddamn it. Uh, he was talking that good ass What's game. What's the nigga name? Homie he had everybody food at first. Oh, fuck, man. Uh, Him and Tony Closer <laughs> beat the people. See, Tony Closer gave the money back. <laughs> Tony gave the money back. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Man, what's that nigga now? He was a big real estate. He had everybody. Yeah, he, was out here. he was out talking to a lot of people. Uh, Morrison. Morrison? Is it? No, nah, it wasn't Morrison. It wasn't Morrison. Uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. It'll come. So, so, so let me just say this, homie. Uh, I, I know I, I got law enforcement friends, homie, who, who people uh, believe in these guys so much uh, that they, they, they gave into this. So I, I ask people all the time, let's go back to uh, prosperity preaching. Let's let's go there. So prosperity preaching came about late nineties, two thousand. For then it was fire and hailstone brim preaching. Then all of a sudden you got these prosperity preachers, Benny Hinn, uh, Creflo Dollar, uh, everything began about man prosperity. God is prosperity, and it became about money. So we started seeing multi-rich preachers, but everybody who was sowing these big seeds. We never heard no testimony where, man, I sold $10,000 to preacher, and boy, I'm a millionaire. You never heard those stories, but you would hear the preachers say this, right? Thanks. So that's the first one. So for 10 years, there was a big portion and big faction of black people, homie, who were running to the church, believing if they sow these big seeds into these churches, that's, where all, that's who built the mega churches. That's who built the mega churches. The prosperity preaching and people believing, I got a seed, Reverend. And people were throwing money at the preachers thinking that the, the return on the seed would go be tenfold. And boy, these people check engine light ain't went off yet. God damn. So let's go to the second thing, a second wave that came about. Credit restoration, oh, credit shit. repair. Oh, man. Boy, that hit big and boom. Man, you signed him up for 20. We never saw nobody who got into these programs who went from having bad credit to all of a sudden having credit, business credit, discredit. <laughs> 30 days. Come on, homie. We never saw it. That lasted for 10 years to a decade. Then all of a sudden, here come the real estate gurus. Here come all these real estate programs. Take my real estate. We never saw nobody who won from it, homie. Hey. So, so at some point, uh, the government can't keep saving black people. Cause I'm sure they didn't scam a bunch of white people, cause it wouldn't have lasted this long. Mm. So, I, no, wait, so, so I would ask you then. I would ask you then. What What are your thoughts if a scammer scams a scammer? Uh, I've been scammed before. Yeah, I've been a scammer who been a scam. I used to be a, I used to be a nigga that like to play with that counterfeit money. Uh, you have any remorse for them? Uh, no, nah, man. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, uh, because I when I when I took it out the streets and started putting it on regular the the, square, the, the working man is it, where the bad luck goes goes into play. So as long as I'm keeping it on these street niggas, it's cool. But nigga, I went and put it on the working man. Uh, that's when a nigga was fucking with the throwback jerseys. Uh, uh, Mitchell and I, S. I, yeah, man. I, I, and that's when nigga was spending a thousand dollars, five hundred, eight hundred bottle. Uh, man, I shoot like five thousand uh, dollars counterfeit money uh, on a guy around Christmas time, around this time, and he go to the mall and try to and, and get jammed up. Uh, this grown man called crying. Uh, cause he in some trouble. <laughs> kind of money. He, yeah, he in some trouble. Uh, and, and they was starting to get hot on it. Uh, make a long story short, nigga, within a week or two after that, shit, I get got with some fool gold. Uh, Mexican catch me with that gold. Uh, yeah, with that gold, uh, we walk in the pawn shop, but he got somebody in the pawn shop in on it too. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, man, so they testing and everything and say, hey, man, I give you 800 for the bracelet. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking nickel. <laughs> Come on. I'm saying, man, if a pawn, they give me 800 for this bracelet, man, I know a pawn shop I can take it to at least get 15. You know what I'm saying? And man, not, I ain't thinking about the necklace. So uh, they wink at each other, uh, cancel the transaction. 
it should have dawned on me. Why wouldn't he point it in? <laughs> you hear me? But I'm greedy. Yeah. Greedy. You up. can't think straight. So soon we get outside and say, hey, homes, I'll sell it to you. I hurry up and say, man, get here. Jump in the car. My baby mom said, give me, give me 800 This bill money. Man, give me $800. She just cashed her check. She said, man, you sure? Man, give me the money. Shit, man, here I give it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Nigga be man, <laughs> jump in that motherfucker, go straight to the pawn shop, and this is fool's gold. Come back to where they got it from, and they playing dumb. <laughs> so do you crash out? Yeah. Like, yeah. But, but get what? When you get back in the car with your baby mama, you know what she say? A counterfeit money you shot on that man. Man. He in trouble, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the universe course correct. Say, homie, uh, next thing you know, uh, nigga getting rent money gone, so now you're getting evicted at your little apartment. Now you and baby mama breaking up. <laughs> like, oh, you know yeah, this sets a domino effect. Domino effect. Not as free. Man, the best part is if you could have paid him, that makes me some kind of fit money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got I out. paid the nigga. <laughs> you hear me? I'm trying to be honest with the Mexican. Yeah. yeah, I done paid the nigga. So yeah. Man, that would have been. But, oh, but, but, look, but look at this though, homie. <laughs> I don't think to put it down on the Mexican. Right. I put it down on my people. Man. Yeah, yeah. that's how we think though. When we doing wrong, homie, we don't never think to do wrong over here. It's always to do it here because we feel safer. Yeah. We feel safer. It's, it's almost less consequences. 